Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen and I want to welcome you back to another edition of your Adrenal Fix. Today I wanted to talk to you about adrenal fatigue and dietary ketosis. If you've heard of ketosis or ketogenic diets, then you have an idea of what we're talking about today. Dietary ketosis is when you have a fuel source of dietary fat or your fat that you have stored in your body and utilizing that as your main primary energy source. Whereas when we're in glyco glycolysis, we use glucose as our main fuel source. So what I would like you to try to start to look at is trying to control your blood sugar, which is one of the major, major inducers of adrenal stress, meaning if you miss a meal, you wait too long, you eat a lot of carbohydrates, um, you're stressed out, uh, you're, you're eating sugary foods, or you're eating too much foods, or you're waiting too long between meals, then what's happening is your blood sugar is roller coastering. And that's called dysglycemia. And dysglycemia is the state of having unstable blood sugar where you could be somewhere in between the 65 to 110 range, which is recommended, and you may be, say, 78, or you may be 99, or you may be 101, depending on what your fasting glucose levels is. But you may have signs of shakiness, lightheadedness, jittery if you're not eating a meal, or crashing after a meal. Suffice to say, if you're watching this video and you have adrenal fatigue issues, then there's a good chance that you have blood sugar stabilization issues. So what we want to try to do is we want to try to get you to the point where you're burning fat as your main fuel source. And so the typical diet that people have, I'd say in general, is about 60% carbs, 30% proteins, and 10% fats. And when that's the case, you're certainly going to be burning glucose as your energy source. However, from a dietary ketosis point of view, it should be somewhere between the 70 to 80% fats, the 10 to 20% proteins, and the 0 to 10% carbs. And that is a major paradigm shift because we're educated to be taught that fat is bad, that saturated fat will make you uh, have cardiovascular diseases or that you'll have placking of your arteries and, and, and also placked arteries. That's not what's going to happen at all, especially if you're keeping your grams of sugars low. And what will happen is over time, you'll start using your dietary fat as a fuel source versus your sugar as a fuel source. So as a person who will take in, say, 200, 2,000 calories a day, then someone who's taking 70 to 80% fat is taking 1,600 to 1,400 calories of fat per day. So what does that mean? That can mean healthy cheeses if you don't have a food reactivity to dairy. It could mean healthy oils, medium chain triglycerides, coconut oils, olive oils, um, nuts and seeds, and even eggs and fatty meats like uh, bacons. Uh, it's kind of like an Atkins diet, um, but it's done with the adage of not going over your protein threshold, meaning if you eat too much protein, if you're supposed to eat 10 to 20 percent of protein per day, so that could be 200 to 400, which is basically 50 to 100 grams of protein per day, you could be eating a lot of protein because you're eating little carbs, high protein paleo diets, and you're exceeding 100 grams of protein per day, you're going to get into the glucose state of burning sugar because what happens is excess protein is turned into sugar if you eat too much of that. And then lastly, 0 to 10%, obviously we're not going to eat 0 carbs per day, but 10% of a 2,000 calorie diet is 200 calories, 
which is basically 50 grams of carbs. And it doesn't take much to get above carbs. If you have a banana, that's 27 grams. If you have an apple, it's 26 grams. If you have uh, a sweet juice, you're above 40 or 50 grams. So the homework assignment I want you guys to do is look at your next three days and try to find out how many total grams of carbs you're taking per day. And then what I want you to do after that, those three days, is try to get below 50. And that's going to be really, really hard. How are you going to know? On the label it shows it, or just go on Google and Google how many carbs in, you know, in a sweet potato. And that could be 29 grams of carbs. So it takes one sweet potato to be below your level and two to be above your level. The other thing I want you to do is try to get a lot of healthy fats. So that could be eggs and cheese and um, nuts and seeds and oils, but be careful that if you're reacting to certain foods that you don't get those foods in your diet. What is this going to do? This is going to give you the ability to burn fat as your fuel. It's going to take pressure off the adrenal glands to having to stabilize that sort of up and down dipping of the of the sugar stores. It's also going to reduce inflammation in your body. It's going to help heal your gut. It's going to be better hormone signaling. And I really believe if you're suffering with adrenal fatigue, then you should be trying to get into a ketogenic diet. So this is Dr. Joel Rosen. Hopefully you found this little piece of information really informative. If you did, then just give me a thumbs up, a like, or a share, and be sure to check out my website at adrenalfatiguesociety.com. Once again, Dr. Joel Rosen and another edition of Your Adrenal Fix. Thank you so much.